Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we're going to be talking you through how to get spin with our wedges. So there's four main things that we're going to discuss today. There's going to be our equipment, our technique, the golf course and also the conditions that we're coming to play when we're talking about spin in as golf shots. You know it's a question I get a lot from golfers asking how do we put spin on, how do I spin it, what things we do change, how do you do that, how do we spin it back on the green, all these questions. So we're going to look at answering them today. Now first thing that has to be right for us to have spin is as equipment. So I'm talking about the club mainly. So we can't have any mud on the surface so that has to be taken off. Even checking your grooves in there if we can see on there. So getting all the little, all, all the grooves out of there, all the bits of mud out of there, knife, brush, anything like that, that has to be cleaned. And also the grooves have to be sharp and fresh. So if your grooves are worn out on your wedges, maybe time to look at new ones if you're wanting that spin and more control around your, around your chip shots and your full shots as well. So if we see mud on your clubs and covering them grooves, do not to expect to get any spin. Um, so mud, is not as friend get that off your clubs and also moisture um when hitting shots if there's water on your clubs or anything like that that will go against it that'll create less spin on your shots so if it's a day like today where we've got like a little bit of dew on the ground and uh, i see it a lot when you have a practice swing and i do it a lot myself you have a practice swing club picks up that water that's going to be dried off before we hit the shot so you can you can use this and everything we're going to say today in like your pre-shot routine so you select a club um, you're looking at your shot, check your golf club to make sure there's no mud in there. Dry it with your towel um, before you're hitting that shot. So for more spin, we want to get into them grooves, clean them, make sure they're sharp, dry the club near moisture, then we're ready to go. So next, onto the golf ball. So to create that spin, we want to be using a soft cover golf ball. Uh, so when the club hits it, it's easier to generate that spin. So for some golfers who might be using a harder shell golf ball for maybe more distance in the golf shots, you've got to weigh up whether you're wanting that distance in your shots or you're wanting uh, the spin that we're trying to generate. Um, that can be, you can be deciding on that or you could be moving to a more premium golf ball, which can then offer you both, but obviously making the cost of a golf ball more expensive. So the next part is on to his technique and how we would swing it to help us generate spin um, on our golf shots. So basically we're looking at loft on this there. So if I've got the golf club like that, that is then giving us the loft on the club which is gonna generate spin. So we want that and as you can see in the shaft is remaining like that. If we have his hands too far forward, that's de-lofting the club and taking the spin off. And then if we go too far back, that can be, you know, we can be hitting the ground, hitting with the ground below and then not, no spin at all and just blading the shots. But we've got to be careful here of flicking it through like that and we're wanting to maintain, maintain the golf club straight up like that, which is then maintaining that loft on the golf club that you can see there. So the best thing there, and then we've got to create that good strike to then spin it as well. And then there, when that shaft's coming through at impact like that and straight, we've got to try and shift his weight forward Onto if you're a right-handed golfer, onto this left side and turn with your hips through there like that so that we can maintain that shaft leaner impact to be straight up and then maintaining the loft on the club through impact. And also to remember when we're swinging through at impact and moving onto his left side, we're going to be coming slightly down on his angle of attack. But we're going to be, with the shaft pointing upwards like that, we're going to be keeping that loft and almost cutting down on the golf ball to again, generate that spin. So that's his technique looked at, what we need to do through impact to his golf ball. Now let's go onto the course and we'll look how course conditions, lies, and the surroundings will affect spin on his golf ball. So the first lie we're gonna look at is when you're in the middle of the fairway. This is my ball, obviously, in the fairway. Um, so with this one, there's no, there's, when it's a tight line, there's very little amount of grass that can get in between the ball and the club, stopping that ball spinning. So this is basically the perfect opportunity to get a spin in the ball. Again, dry that club, hit the shot, 
Uh, we're going to put a video on now and just showing you that, that there's nothing in between the ball that's going to help like, stop that spinning. So here we've got we've, here we've got a lie, which is like in the semi rough, which is a little bit of a sneaky one and can easily fool you, because here we've got a little bit of grass between the ball and the club that's going to be an impact. We've got it's a little bit wet. This is one where it's going to take a lot of the spin off your ball. So this is what you could get called a flyer. Now it might be something that you have to take into consideration. Well, I know I definitely do when you're playing these shots because we're going downhill to this pin. I think it's 100 yards and this is where you might club up because there's potential for a flyer and on this one we've got out of bounds over the back of the green very very easily from this semi rough to get what we call a flyer where there's no spin on the golf ball which then leads to more distance in your club and obviously you target you're then over it and flying over the back of the green so as you can see it's not it's not like a bad lie in the rough you'd still look at that and think oh it's okay but you've got a lot of grass there between club and ball a lot of wetness so like i said there'll be a lot of spin taken off this shot resulting in the ball flying a lot further potentially for that flyer and this is what can also be very like influential in your club selection because here if you if this this, this is my club that goes about 100 105 yards my 54 if we've got this here in that lie I'd be tempted to go up to maybe a 58 just in case that flyer here on this hole we happen to be downhill so if i was short wouldn't be too much of a problem because it could roll onto the green but if we went long on this hole we're out of bounds and we're dead oh played one that four foot so that's the lies looked at. So staying with course conditions, what we can have is the greens. So like now it's winter, our, our greens here are, are quite wet. So there's a lot, not much, not more spin on your shots, but the greens are going to be more receptive to spin than they will be in like June if we've had no rain. So just something else to consider when you're maybe playing a chip shot that is, when it's now and it's wet, maybe a little bit boggy, you're going to chip and it's going to spin or, or, or take the spin a lot more rather than fast forward to six months into June, July, where you hit the shot onto that firm green. There'll still be that spin there, but the green won't react to it as much and it'll run out a little bit further. So that's on like how the lie can affect spin on the golf ball, how it can take it off and add it on. Um, also, another big thing to remember is the wind. So if we're into the wind, the ball will then fly up adding more spin onto it and if you're going downwind you're going to have less uh, less spin onto it and it's going to take it off now it sounds it sounds like there's a lot here to remember i mean there is to be fair but add this into your pre-shot routine when you're looking at the shot looking at the yardage what shot you're wanting to hit i will do a video on my pre-shot routine and show you what we talk about when we're deciding on club selection yardages that we want to play to target yardages shot shapes everything like that so stick around for that Thank you very much for watching. If you've got any questions, let me know. Drop us a comment, drop us a like. Please subscribe to the channel. I'm carrying on practicing. We'll see you later.